Friends and colleagues, I think we would get started this evening. We may. Thank you very much for coming this evening. It's wonderful to see everyone here this evening for this special lecture. We have, of course, two competing events on in the outside world. One is the weather system, which is causing some attention, gathering some attention. And then, of course, it's budget evening. But those who are sensible are here this evening, where it's warm, it's dry, and we've got very interesting things to discuss. So welcome. My name is Tom Cavan. I'm Dean of the Faculty of Architecture, Building and Planning and it's at the University of Melbourne. And it's our great pleasure to host this lecture this evening. I begin the evening's proceedings, of course, by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which this event is taking place, the land of the Wurundjeri of the Kulin Nation. And I pay my respects to their elders and their families, past and present. This is our second lecture in the Dean's Lecture Series for 2015, and it's our great pleasure to host this evening Professor Manfred Groman, an eminent engineer, highly regarded for his engineering work as co-principal alongside Klaus Bollinger of Bollinger and Groman. A global engineering firm, Bollinger and Groman are known for their uniquely design-driven approach and for tackling some of the most structurally challenging projects worldwide. Manfred Groman, of course, is also the Professor of Structural Design at, in the School of Architecture, Urban Planning and Landscape Architecture at the University of Kassel in Germany. But in choosing the name of our graduate school, the Melbourne School of Design, we've articulated a position that, is dis that design is a distinct perspective and it has major contributions to examining situations, identifying opportunities and translating these into reality. The insights of design are many, but may be illustrated as seeing a gem in a rough stone. To us, design may be carried out not only in delineation of geometry, but also in words, in models, and numerically. The writing of a policy is design. The calculation of a structure is design. So it's in this context, then, we are eager this evening to have the opportunity to gain design insights through the work of a structural engineering practice Bollinger and Groman have been responsible for some of the most well-known structures across the world. And if you've attended, if you look in the Dulux Gallery, you'll see these works exhibited on the wall and interactively and in model form. Based in Frankfurt am Main and with several other offices, including a small presence here in Melbourne, they are active in 20 countries outside Germany. So the firm's specialties are structural engineering, facade design, and sustainable engineering. In particular, here in the Australasian region, where issues of sustainability have risen to the fore, and where many of you will be working on structurally diverse projects, I'm sure you'll be interested to hear what Professor Groman will have to say this evening about the, the two disciplines of architecture and engineering, and how indeed they can be married. Some of their well, more well-known works, as the Rolex Learning Center in Lausanne, the multi-purpose building for the Ecole Federale, uh, uh, sorry, the Ecole Polytechnique Federale designed by a Japanese firm, um, Isana. They're also responsible for the realization of the BMW world in Munich, the delivery center of BMWs worldwide, in collaboration with the architecture of Kup Himmelbau. And in Asia, their work includes the KT Tower in South, um, Seoul, South Korea, an office building for Korean Telecom, designed in conjunction with the Italian architects, Renzo Piano Architects. So it's a diverse portfolio. It includes libraries, sports stadia, museums, and educational institutes. And these include structures that have pushed capacities to the technical limits and won awards. And so in 2014, the firm won the best tall building in Europe for the Vienna DC Tower. And they've also won the iconic award in 2013 from the German Design Council for a roof design for the Frankfurt Fair. So please join me in welcoming Professor Manfred Grumman. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Dean, for inviting me. It's a great pleasure for me to be here in Melbourne for such a great audience. I'm just a simple engineer, and this is what my story tonight is about, just a simple engineering love affair, architecture and structure. I've been trained as a structural engineer in Darmstadt, Technical University in Darmstadt, and we had no, during my studies, no contact with architecture. There was the 
it was just the other way around. Our teachers told us that the architect is the enemy. He wants you to do things you must not do. And then, <laughs> and then we learned that, that it's just the other way around, that there really should be a love affair between architecture and structure. There cannot be architecture without structure, so if both go together, they can enhance the whole process. As Tom said, we are in, in Europe, and all, since a two years also with a small office here in, in Melbourne. This is our scope of work, structural. We, we came from the structural design and then expanded our scope of work into facade design and building performance, realizing uh, that not only the structure is important, but the facade and the whole concept, the whole climatic concept has become more and more important over the last, the last years. And also this story of dealing with complex geometry and not dealing with only with geometry but bringing geometry and structure together has been has been a big pleasure for us uh, though we have a lot of fun working with this new uh, new tools that's what i want to talk about in the beginning just a few milestones I show some projects that are also in the exhibition, but some others are not in the exhibition. So I think if you watch this presentation and uh, look at the exhibition, there's also a book uh, uh, been published by Detail Verlag about our work, so you can get, have an, get an impression what we are, we are doing. This BMW bubble for the automobile fair in Frankfurt was our first step into complex geometry. We started the design already in, it was completed in 99, we started in 97, and I think we've been one of the first practices using Rhino at uh, these days when it was still a better version, which you could download in the internet. Rhino is a special program which you need to deal with such, a, such a, uh, surfaces. And then a few years later, this Kunsthaus in Graz with Peter Cook, both a bit similar, the facade is a bit similar, both with acrylic glass covered. Strange things with my former colleague Lars Beibrug from university, a 12 meter high composite tower which could be illuminated during the night. This is one of the projects I like very much, the roofs for the Hungerburg Bahn in Innsbruck. This is not acrylic glass, this is real glass, individually bent. For those of you who deal with glass, know that you have to heat it up to 500 degrees to bend it and curve it in, in such a way. Not only, we do not only work with glass and concrete, but also with timber. Uh, one of the most beautiful shops in Paris. So next time, if your credit card allows, allows it, <laughs> It's a place to go in Paris at Rive Gauche. And dealing with all, having de dealt with all, this, with all this complex geometry, we thought that it would be good to bring geometry and structural design together. So together with the, with the research program uh, with the Universität für Angewandte in Vienna, uh, we developed this uh, Caramba. Clemens Preisinger has been here last year and it's a uh, when you look at the interactive tools we have in the exhibition, they work with Caramba. What does Caramba do? Caramba gives you a real-time resp real structural response on a design you develop. So this is a wonderful tool if you want to optimize, if you want to set up optimization loops. This you all can do with Caramba. Of course, you need, you need, at the end of the day, you need, uh, you need a real calculating tool, a real finite element program that is, that is not linear to do all, to, to prove stability, but just for the, design, for the design process, this is a wonderful tool. And for those of you who uh, deal with complex structures, I would really recommend that you go and have a look. At university, this is uh, beautiful. My, my colleague Klaus Bollinger is also teaching at university in Vienna at the Angewandte. Without this, 
without its academic background, we would not do what we do. So uh, there is a possibility to test new things, and this we did uh, three years ago at, at Kassel University, just starting with the with the principle of a folded sheet of paper that's only stable when you fold it. If you get rid of the folding, it falls down. We tried to develop the prototype for, for a bus shelter, for a roof, uh, to activate these membrane forces, and this is the, the result. And here you see the stability of the whole thing. It's a ultra-high performance concrete with a special type of reinforcement, and the edge, edge is only 25 25 millimeters thick. With this principle, last year, this we did together with students, with our students, uh, they developed a design, then they developed a, a construction technique, and then they cast the concrete. First they built the form, then they cast the concrete, and this is uh, the result. It's placed in, in, in front of our restaurant. It's a kind of Möbius bench, we call, it, we call it, since the whole thing is a twisted, twisted uh, Möbius tribe. This is a university scale. This is the real scale. Uh, you also find it in the exhibition. This is the kind of signature, new signature for the new headquarter for Deutsche Bank in Frankfurt. It's a sphere. Uh, built up of uh, 12 millimeters thick, 120 millimeters, 120 millimeters, sorry, 120 millimeter wide stainless steel stripes, calculated, optimized, and it's only and it's self-supporting, only connected to the uh, to the uh, to the walls, and it's in right in the entrance of the of the headquarter of Deutsche Bank. So whenever there is a a photo with, with uh, the board of the Deutsche Bank, they quite often have this sculpture in the background. In Beijing, two years ago, we saw Hadid, this pavilion for the Beijing Pavin, uh, Biennale, which stood right in front, right in front bird's nest, this Olympic Stadium. Again, a structure developed and optimized together with the architect, architects of Saha's office with Caramba. This is a pedestrian bridge at the airport in Frankfurt connecting a car park together with Terminal 1. It's a just a, a lattice girder, but when you look closer, it's an irregular structure developed, optimized uh, with, uh, again with uh, Caramba. Uh, and we could prove that we do, do not have to spend more steel for this structure than we would have for a regular regular structure engineers do, do that more than 150 years, like Karl Kuhlmann in his uh, graphical static uh, set up uh, the rules. But using the computer, you can play with this rule. You can do not have to stay with the strict regular systems. One of the facade projects I like very much is this uh, King Fat National Library, which is in downtown Riyadh. A membrane, membrane shading for a, a glass facade, which is behind, and so we create a real, real, very interesting, nice atmosphere for for this uh, library uh, building. We also we do not do only pavilions. We also do high rises building. This Tom has mentioned the Vienna Donau City Tower. We did with uh, Dominique Perrault again. Most of our works are results of a competition where we start in the competition already with the architect uh, developing the design as we did here. Here we did the structural design and also the facade planning for this Korean telecom headquarter in Seoul. It has a three layer facade with a transparent facade with the sun shading within the facade. This is the stadium in Gdansk in Poland. Uh, where you see this uh, two girders, the model, printed model of these two girders, and you also can, can test on, on the left-hand side of this uh, uh, um, computer, you can, can test Caramba by, by varying the geometry of these girders, and you see, when the system works, you see the deflection in real, the structural behavior, the deflection in real time. This is an interior view. 
Now the first project I want to get in more in, more in detail is the Rolex Learning Center designed by Sana again the result of a very prominent international competition. Uh, here we've been already in the competition again with Sana. Sana is working in Tokyo together with uh, Mutsuro Sasaki. Uh, Sasaki-san is one of the best, uh, I think one of the most, yeah, the best uh, Japanese uh, engineers. And so we, in the competition, we were close together and later on we complete the, the uh, concept design and also the detailed design down to the shop, strong, shop drawings we are normally obliged to do in, uh, in Europe. This was our first project we did with Sana, the design school at Zollverein in, in Essen. Uh, very interesting building when it goes down in detail. The climatic concept is very specific, allows, allowed us to get uh, not to, have, not to have a normal uh, passive thermal insulation. A Vitra delivering center for the company Vitra. I'm sure a lot of you know Vitra, know the chairs of Vitra. And this is a, a very big delivery center, almost 100 meter in, in, in diameter. And it's got this uh, acrylic, acrylic facade. But now, this was the winning design for the Rolex uh, Learning Center. Uh, the two sentences to explain it a bit. It's in the competition. It was the the only the only proposal that stayed with this one-story building, uh, and this one-story building allowed the existing buildings of EPFL, which you see a bit behind behind, uh, to have still a visual contact to the. Lake Geneva uh, to have this beautiful view to, to the Alps when the weather is fine from there you have a view to the Mont Blanc which is Europe's uh, highest mountain and why is it named Rolex Learning Center since uh, EPFL could acquire a lot of donators and Rolex was the biggest donator so uh, it was named Rolex Learning Center. The other names you can you can read there. Um, this is the winning team: Katsuya Sejima and Ryu Nishizawa. Well, but this was the design, and the question then was how how do you build such a thing? How do you build such a thing? And uh, this was the solution. <laughs> uh, the people of the restaurant of EPFL came up with uh, interesting contribution. <laughs> um, so the main elements, we have the roof, which, is, which follows in parallel the, the, the structure of this, this curved slab. We have, we have the columns to support the roof in a, in a regular grid. Then we have this, this sloped, uh, sloped uh, plate Concrete, concrete uh, plate. I, I'm a bit afraid of calling it a shell, since being in Switzerland, you all might know these beautiful shells by Heinz Isler, uh, and we must not compare this with this work of Heinz Isler. Then it's a completely different task. And this folded plate, this kind of landscape, is sitting on a on a horizontal on the horizontal concrete slab, which is the roof of the underground car parking. Why don't I want to name it a, a, a shell since we have this extreme slenderness? The shells of Heinz Isler have a slenderness from 1 to 4, 1 to 5, not 1 to 6. This has, he didn't dare to do. And we, because the, our structure had to be accessible, people should walk on top of it. So we ended up with a ratio of 1 to 21, which... Uh, Normally, in engineers would never do, would never do. You never would do such a structure, and why wouldn't you do it? You, since you are very afraid of this buckling behavior of such a slender structure under very high compression loads. After a long period, including a phase where we, we together with the architect, uh, have been working for the, for the general contractor, uh, and the face, the client named the face design to cost. 
uh, one year we had this, we did had to do design to cost, and we came up we came up with this solution, identifying changing the the whole geometry uh, that would, could allow us to identify primary load paths, and these primary load paths on these primary load paths we then could uh, reinforce the structure by making it, it thicker, like a kind of upstanding, upstanding beams. So, the formwork. How to build the formwork. We had some experience from, from other projects, uh, learning that it's when you, when you break such a complex geometry down into small elements which you easily, using, using uh, parametric manufacturing, you can handle. So we broke the whole geometry down into squares, 2.5 by 2.5 meters. And for each of this square, an individual wooden box was, was planned and then simply nailed together. These boxes, of course, you have to, name the, to, you have to number them very carefully, then ship them on site, build them up, each on a, on a, on a different height, and then that's it. So we, we, with this system, we, we achieved this, this, perfect, this perfect, perfect shape, uh, which was, on the other hand, necessary since we, we, we wanted to, or we decided that we wouldn't allow uh, a, a, a bigger imperfection than, than 20 millimeters. Therefore, we needed this accuracy in the, in the formwork. Now, the, the reinforcement. We had a lot of discussion about the reinforcement and about the whole setup. A lot of alternatives have been checked. So we ended up with, with this system using uh, reinforcement bars with a diameter of 50, 50, 50 millimeter, which you normally do not use in, uh, for, for, for buildings. And uh, this is the, the, the anchoring at the end where we introduced the very high compression forces into the, into the concrete. And these very high horizontal forces, which want to push the whole thing apart, have been connected together by a post-tensioning system, very big elements which you normally do not use for buildings. You use them normally for, for, for bridges only. And these reinforcement bars had to be welded together. Since an overlap joint was not possible, and we thought about the flexibility. You see, these bars are pretty flexible, but anyway, too heavy to place them by hand, though each of them had to be placed by the crane, uh, construction work, and at the end of the day, the concrete. For this big shell, we needed 4,800 cubic meters of concrete, which uh, took two days, 20, 24 hours, two days, uh, to pour the concrete. And this is the result. Well, for me as a structural engineer, I, would, I was satisfied with this sculpture. It could have, it could have stand there. <laughs> but of course, we needed a roof. And the roof is, uh, <laughs> the roof is uh, pretty much straightforward. In one direction, we have kinked steel beams. In the other direction, we have laminated timber beams. And the upper surface of these laminated timber beams is milled down in a way that it's parallel, parallel with the roof, so the corrugated sheets could be directly placed on top of these uh, uh, of this, uh, laminated beams. And that is the result. Uh, on Monday, I had a discussion. You see, there's one, one, one uh, situation where we have, where we have a, an additional, uh, additional common, uh, column due to the accessibility. When, when, you want to, when you go up, you do not want to go start directly going up. So this was, there's a turning point in the curvature, which you might notice over here. And for the change of this curvature, we needed there an additional uh, column. But uh, the rest is flying, simply flying. Of course, you want to place you want to place a table inside. It's a bit difficult to have a table on a sloped on a sloped floor. <laughs> so there are areas that are horizontal, uh, but the whole circulation space is not is not horizontal. Uh, 
it's, it's difficult to, to, to explain such a complex space and uh, only with, uh, with slides. So if you have time, uh, I would recommend that you go on YouTube, just type in Rolex Learning Center and there's a beautiful, four, f just a four minute, f four minutes movie, including an interview with Patrick Ebischer, the president of the EPFL, and he's explaining why that he want, wanted to attract the world best researchers and the most talented students, and therefore he said, I, I need to have a, the world best architecture. This was the reason for him to go for this. And uh, looking at your building here, I really would like to congratulate you. You, you are just on the same track. Okay. Just a small excursion to another project we finished uh, two years, uh, three years ago together with Sana, the Louvre in Lens. Uh, we found this, uh, th uh, this uh, quote, simplicity is the ultimate level of sophistication uh, by Leonardo da Vinci, very good to describe the architecture. Uh, uh, yesterday night we talked about <laughs> Dirk, we talked about uh, that the older the architects get, the simpler the solutions should be. Uh, the Louvre Lens, a dépendance for, of the Musée du Louvre uh, uh, à Paris, uh, decided to go to Lens, a former mining area, and the site is the site of a former coal mine. There they placed this museum, the entrance building, and uh, th uh, three gallery wings. This is the entrance building. It's just columns and a roof. This is the, uh, are the galleries building. The facade is disappearing, just disappearing. It's a um, aluminum sheet, anodized aluminum sheet. And also the, in the interior space, just these soft mirroring walls. Almost no roof, just light above, and that's it. So it's uh, really worth, it's just a one hour ride with the TGV from Paris uh, to go to Lens and see this building. Also, not only for the building, <laughs> but also for the context, for, for the content, since uh, Musée du Louvre, they really have their high class, their, their high class art in, inside uh, this building. Now, back in Frankfurt, Städel Museum, this is the Städel Museum. Uh, the Städel Museum goes down to a foundation that was created exactly 200 years ago in eight, 18, uh, 1815 by Johannes Städel, who gave all his money after his death to this foundation and the, the, the obligation for the foundation was to, to continue collecting the art he already had collected. So it's a, a very high quality, fine arts museum in, uh, in, in Frankfurt. And they want to, wanted to have an extension, uh, 3,000 square, me square meters, quite, a, quite a, a big volume. And together with Schneider Schumacher, Frankfurt-based architects, uh, we have been in the competition and our decision was to build this extension in the main entrance access and to, so to say, to undermine uh, the garden. And this was the uh, result. We wanted to keep the garden. Then this garden space is very important for the museum. In summer, they do parties to collect money. So it's a very prominent space in Frankfurt also. And to, so to make this museum, what happened uh, underground, what happened underneath, uh, uh, not only visual, but also that you could experience it. We, we de uh, d developed this kind of hill, this kind of hill where people could, can walk on to, uh, as a sign, as a sign to the outside that there's something, something has changed underneath. How do you shape such a slope? We made a virtual form finding with uh, using a finite element program. Here in that case, we used ANSYS. Uh, to, to, optimize, to optimize the form. Then on this, on this form, we had to place the, uh, the skylights, circular skylights with different diameter. 
And at the, at the end of the day, you have to tell the contractor the X, Y, Z coordinates of the formwork. So how do you calculate when you have different, different uh, diameters uh, and uh, uh, different positions for the skylight? How do you tell them? Uh, uh, how can you find this X, Y, Z coordinate? So again, we set up this parametric, making the computer calculate all this, this coordinates. This is a printing model of the, of the roof. And this is the, the detail. All technical installation goes along, goes along with this, with this skylight. What you see in dark is the concrete structure. And then you see uh, the thermal insulation and then the, the earth above for the, for the, uh, for the lawn. This, the formwork here, we had, we had higher requirements on the, to, for the quality of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, the surface of the slab. So we uh, developed a special formwork. We, that means blocks of foam have been milled down and then uh, coated with a poly, polyurethane to, to provide the perfect perfect smoothness of the surface. For cost reasons, we used this formwork for this, uh, for this quarters four times. Again, we had to provide uh, reform, uh, for reinforcement drawings uh, with bath in longitudinal direction and also with, uh, with uh, stirrups. And therefore, again, we use the computer to de de develop the bending forms. There is a, um, a f the f in the flat part of the roof, we had to use uh, post tensioning, post tensioning cables. And at the end of the day, uh, the roof before pouring the concrete looked like this. And um, students, I'm always asking, what, what you see here? <coughs> what do you see here? What is brown is, of course, the reinforcement. What is white is a ductwork for cables. Red are the tubes for the thermal activation, since the roof is used for cooling. So we have, in summer, there is cool water running through these uh, tubes. And black are the, the post-tensioning cables. An amazing, an <coughs> amazing space, an uh, amazing structure. I've never seen a thing like this. Uh, it looks really, really strange, a bit strange, unique. From outside, it looked this way. Of course, you want to close. Uh, you, you, you have to provide a shading device. You do not want the sunshine directly into the gallery space. And for, for, uh, for shading, you, you, you need, uh, it cannot be circular, so we needed this. Uh, the square boxes uh, and all the technical installation have been, has been inside these uh, uh, this boxes. Another piece of art is this monolithic stair sculpture, concrete cast in situ, cast in situ and then, and then treated like, like in Renaissance, they treated the marble. It's a perfect, a perfect shape. This is a result of the, gal of the gallery. Uh, f for my opinion, uh, these, these uh, temporary partition walls are at least 50 centimeters too high. A lot of others think so also, but, but the architect is saying it has been the curator, and the curator is saying the architect wanted it, so... <laughs> but w w when they change it, the, these are only partition walls, they easily can, can be taken down and uh, can be, uh, the whole thing can be lowered. And this is not a rendering, this is the real thing. And so, i just put these pictures together. Uh, this is how it looked before, before the, the new place. This is how it looks now. And here you see how it's used. So it has be, really become a very interesting uh, space here for, for the people in, in uh, Frankfurt. Again, Frankfurt. It's a very busy city, Frankfurt, you, I can tell you. <laughs> uh, the European Central Bank, one of our uh, projects where you, where I also can say once in a lifetime. We, 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 started, we started with the first, first work for the competition in 2001. 
in 2001, and the building was completed uh, by the end of last year. So in Europe, planning and building processes are sometimes a bit, uh, it, it take time. It takes time, but quality uh, takes time anyway. Uh, we did this competition already with Coop Pimmelblau. We are with Coop Pimmelblau since, since more than 20 years working together. Our first building with Coop Pimmelblau was this Ufa Cinema Center in Dresden. It was the first time we used AutoCAD in a 3D version. I can tell you, <laughs> we, had a lot of lot of, we made a lot of experience with this, uh, with this building in the, mid, in the mid 90s. And then Tom mentioned it, uh, we did this BM, BMW, BMW World in Munich, ju uh, wonderful setting right adjacent to this beautiful Olympic Park. There is this uh, building of the BMW World. And we are also very proud, this BMW World has more visitors than Neuschwanstein. <laughs> In Asia, we had two big projects with, with quite a few more, but these are the most prominent. This Busan Cinema Center we completed in 2010. An 80-meter cantilevering roof, which is for the film festival used as a pro projection area to, to present uh, movies. And uh, two years ago, the Stalian uh, Conference Center with this incredible interior, uh, interior space. And recently, end of last year, the Musée de Confluence à Lyon was uh, uh, completed an, uh, a museum for, for science and uh, technology in, in, uh, in Lyon. But now, this European Central Bank, here you see Frankfurt. This is all, all Frankfurt, just two kilometers in diameter. And that, that is the, 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 the city. You see on the west side, there is the, 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 the banking. All the banks are concentrated. And right on the other side, there is a place where the uh, Großmarkthalle was placed, a listed building built in 1926 by Martin Elsässer, a famous German uh, architect. A very interesting, and technology-wise interesting buildings since this concrete uh, cylindrical concrete shells uh, are uh, in development which was derived from the planetarium in, in Jena. For those of you who are in building history, they might know this building in Jena. And this was decided that should be, become the site for the new European Central Bank. The whole, the whole area from the river Main to this, to this uh, street here. And this was the winning, uh, the winning design in this uh, competition, which went on for three years, three steps. Uh, inter, again, a very international competition with 80 participants in the beginning. And at the end, the winning team, Coop Pimmelblau. Uh, the offices in this uh, kind of twin tower connected via an atrium and the uh, Großmarkthalle houses all the conference facilities and the libraries and the restaurants that are necessary for such an organization like, like ECB. Uh, when, you, when you look at the two high rises, you see that the atrium is, uh, is the walls on both sides of the atrium are vertical and parallel. And this scheme shows how the design was derived, starting with a, with a volume that represents the, the space program. And this volume just cut in two parts, but not parallel, but with a, with a, uh, with a, twisting, with a twisting cut, and then taking them apart and putting the two parallel former outer sides back to back. And that is then the building. So this is how the geometry came from. And also this surface you see there is a hyperbolic surface. Uh, when, we, when you break this hyperbolic surface down to one facade element, it's just planar. You can, the, the twisting you can, you can uh, deal with in the, in the joint between the facade elements. The renovated uh, Großmarkthalle, this is on one side, this big space was left open. In the other parts, there is an, uh, a new conference building, a two-story conference building was put into, into the uh, Großmarkthalle to, to leave the listed building uh, standalone. 
uh, the structural elements of the high rise, we have the cores, we have the horizontal slabs, and we have the platforms, inter uh, uh, connecting platforms, and uh, the bracing. Due to, the, due to this twisting, the, the floor plan of, in each floor is different. So it's, uh, on, uh, when, uh, on ground level, one, one of these two uh, high rises is parallel, and then it twists, uh, it twists up to, to, uh, to have this uh, ir irregular shape. Uh, Structure-wise, the whole thing works as a, as a fixed, uh, as a uh, kind of lattice girder fixed to the ground. And uh, we have this, uh, the, the, the sh uh, sh uh, shafts of the, of the elevator are, the, are the, the cords. Then we have these diagonals and we have these posts. So as you can imagine, uh, when you apply lateral forces to this, there are quite high forces in these diagonals. They have to transport, these forces have to be trans transferred down. Though so we needed embedded items to take these forces into, into the, into the uh, vertical concrete walls. And this is one of these embedded items, 10 millimeters, oh, sorry, 100 millimeters, 10 centimeters, 100 millimeters thick. And this is one of these diagonals, uh, uh, one meter by one meter, 10 millimeters thickness. This is one of these uh, uh, connection elements. Uh, the company needed to install a special lifting device for these diagonals since the, the longest of them has a weight for, of about 100 tons. And this is such a weight you cannot lift with a normal, normal crane. Though they have been pre-assembled down on the, on, the, on the ground and then in two parts lifted. And then uh, in, in situ, uh, as you see here, in situ welded together. And when you want to weld such a, such a 100 millimeters steel plate, you have to cover it, you have to heat it up. It took, uh, took uh, six days to, to weld this all together. And at the end, when, when, you, when you look at the, uh, at the uh, relationship, uh, the thickness looks reasonable for the length of these uh, diagonals. Some impressions on the building side and this dynamic dynamic thing, and, and uh, uh, this is the whole, whole ensemble. And four weeks ago, four weeks ago, Mark Simons wrote in the, in the uh, in an international German paper, uh, the perfect expression of yin and yang principle. And this, of course, as a bloody, bloody structural engineer being involved in such a symbol for yin and yang. <laughs> <laughs> And now, uh, project with which uh, where construction work just has, has started, where construction work just has started, is the King Abdullah Center for Science and Technology, Kaxt, in, in Riyadh, together with Lava Architects, based in Stuttgart, Berlin, and, and, uh, and Sydney. Um, the, the idea for the building came from this Voxel project. was a competition we did together with Lava for, for a uh, university building in Stuttgart. You, 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 you find this, this competition on, the, on, on this big screen in, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, exhibition. It's, uh, uh, the idea was to use the computer not for optimizing structures, but to use the computer for optimizing uh, architecture. That means uh, we defined a, a, a volume, uh, a certain volume, uh, and the computer arranged this volume in a way that, that there is a, there is that you can walk up, walk up on the exterior of the building. You can walk around, and the whole thing is structural. Does a structural work? So this was the idea we developed for this competition, and then we came to charge for this for this very big project. This. Uh, City for Science and Technology. Actually, two years earlier, we finished here. This is a kind of Prince Salman science oasis. Prince Salman, he was a prince at this time. Now he's the king of the, of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. 
it's a kind of science center and adjacent to it, uh, this headquarter. And the design of this building uh, is like, like this. Uh, so we have quite, in, in Saudi, you have quite a lot of sun. You do not want too much sun come into your building. And this was one uh, design principle. So the east, we have the, uh, despite like completely the other way around, like you normally build a high rise, we had all the, uh, all the rooms for, 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 for washrooms, for the elevators and all the service rooms. We had on the, on the east side and on the west side. Since on east and west, we have, the, we have the low sun coming deep into the building. This we wanted to block. And on the south and north, where we have a very, the sun is almost uh, uh, shining vertical, there we would allow uh, more uh, transparency. For such a building, you normally have an interior atrium, but this atrium, uh, we, of course, we needed the space to bring light into the building, but then we, um, have to go back, uh, we, used the same volume than we had for this atrium, but we distributed it in a way that on, on, on the south side, on the north side, this atrium could have contact to the exterior. So we would not have only light coming from the top of the building, but also from, uh, from the sides. And this was optimized. We did a, we did a detailed, uh, detailed uh, 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 lighting study. Uh, and then the f again, uh, where the, this atrium is directly in contact with the facade, there we had 100% transparency, that means glass, and on the other side we, we had a, a different, a different uh, transparency, so, so this gives you an idea of how the interior uh, looks like, and then we then try to, to calculate this, this different, different transparency. Again, we set up a caramba thing. And um, this is then the, the, the facade. It, we, we also, uh, facade is not vertical, but we also have a kind of setback within the facade, which causes a lot of structural, structural challenges. Um, this is uh, other facade elements with the different openings. Uh, the structural system, we have the cores, we have the columns, we have, I would, will explain it uh, uh, later, this kind of transfer system. We have this load, and we have this load bearing facade, and of course, we have horizontal pre stressed uh, slabs. So we have this horizontal pre stressed slabs, and since we are playing around with this atria, you see that there are some columns, some columns that end at a certain level, and Column cannot end. We have to take the load. We have to take the load in a. Uh, and f for this load takedown, for this load transfer, we introduced this uh, system, which which is called a, a flag wall. Since the wall looks like a flag, so it it uh, it allows it allows the vertical load of one column that is not continued to be transferred to the adjacent column. So. With this, we, we distributed these flag walls in, inside the building. For the facade, we had a similar problem, but this then was solved by uh, building these this beams as a kind of, kind of Fierendale beams without, without uh, uh, diagonals. So this is a kind of idea. Um, the facade, north and south facade, and the different colors uh, gives you an idea of, of the setback. The blue is in, in uh, the, the, the outermost, the outermost surface. When you when you zoom in, you see this Fierendale. Uh, normally, you would build this Fierendale completely out of steel, but in Riyadh, steel works is much expensive, almost not possible. Though when, whenever possible, uh, uh, we were told to try to do it to do it in a re with reinforced concrete. So we the this is a girder used to, to uh, torsional girder used to allow this, uh, this uh, setback of the facade. And here you see these embedded items where we connected the reinforcement with a, with a steel node. And inshallah, at the end of the day, it will hopefully uh, look like this. 
uh, a bit of jump in, of jump in scale uh, to, 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 to explain that we, we are not only doing this I sh should have mentioned in the beginning. What I'm presenting here, these are the, the signature work we do. Our day-to-day -day work, our bread and butter work is a bit different to what, uh, to what I'm presenting here. Of course, we, 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 we know how a normal office building, how a normal residential building works. We do it, we do it on a, of course, on a day-by-day -day basis. And this is a, this project I now want to show, an Energy Plus townhouse in, in Frankfurt, which is still under construction. Uh, Frankfurt, well, Frankfurt is not as big as Melbourne. You, I, I was, was told you have, you have 1,000 people coming to Melbourne per week, 1,000 new people who need, who, who need, who need uh, housing and who, who need infrastructure. Unbelievable. We have, we have a, a bit less, significant less. <laughs> uh, but anyway, people are moving into the cities. This is also a, f a phenomenon we in Germany have to face. The, the countryside gets empty and people go into the city. So uh, the city is desperately, desperately looking, looking for, for a building plot. Do, do you see a building plot here? Perfect building plot. <laughs> this car park, yeah? o only eight meters deep, only eight meters deep, but you see what you, what you can fit on an eight meter, eight <laughs> m uh, meter deep uh, uh, plot. Uh, this is the organization. Uh, the, um, the back side is the north side, so the south side is where, 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 where the, everything is, where the flats are orientated. We have one staircase, and then one staircase uh, serves for, for, three, uh, for uh, three flats. Why energy plus? Why energy plus? The building is covered, uh, big parts of the facade have photovoltaic to produce electric, electric, electric energy that then is uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, regulation, the law in Germany allows someone who produces uh, uh, solar energy to, to sell them for a higher price uh, to, the, to the supplier than he, he buys normal electrical energy. Um, and a special thing here, we use the sewage the, just around the corner. The, there is a big sewage collector and we, we, knew, we use the warm water of the sewage by a, by a heat exchanger to heat the building, to heat the building. Though so this is quite a unique, uh, uh, you, you could, could not do it for, for every building in a city. It's, it's quite a unique thing you, you, you can do for, 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 for this building. So uh, another thing, the, these flats are airtight. We are in Germany obliged to uh, well, here in this case, the city of Frankfurt um, uh, said that it only would do buildings following these passive house rules. These buildings have to be airtight, and passive house means uh, that you almost do need no heating. There is no heating in this building, even though in winter time we have a possible minus 20 degrees for two or even three weeks. You do not need the heating. The, uh, and the air exchange is, is guaranteed by a ventilation system which has uh, 1.5 air changes per hour, which is normally okay for, um, for um, such a type of building. And with this, we, uh, at least the cal calculation says this, we, we get 80% uh, on an on a annual base on an annual base, we get 80% surplus. Uh, but only if the users of this building try to follow the rules. So you get a bonus when you switch on your washing machine when the, when the sun is shining. Then the, the electrical energy is produced directly and doesn't have to first transfer it into, into the, 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 the system and then uh, bought again back from the system. So this is a bit difficult since you have to, you have to use, when you live there, you have to use the building like, a bit like you are using your car. You have to understand what you are doing. Uh, this is a normal situation we now face. We have uh, the, um, the ducts for the electrical installation are embedded into the concrete and also, also the air ducts, the, the, these white things you see, this is the air duct where the, the, the ventilation system is set up. 
To allow this, we have 30 centimeters of thermal insulation. 30 centimeters of thermal insulation. The system doesn't allow one, one thermal, thermal uh, break. It has to be absolutely, absolutely, there's a, no, no, the, the thermal layer must not be interrupted at all. In this case, uh, we developed special, special prefabricated timber elements that included the thermal insulation that have been attached from outside to the concrete structure to, to ensure that this building is really uh, tight and sealed. It will be completed in, in, in eight weeks and it almost look, uh, looks like uh, this uh, rendering shows. So, now my uh, last project, then, and then you are through. I think I'm still in time. Uh, a project in, in Oslo, uh, Dijkman Library. Uh, Oslo is in Norway, the capital of Norway. They have this beautiful uh, opera house uh, on the, uh, on the uh, water line. And behind this opera house, there used to be a, a six-lane motorway, and they have built a tunnel, though this motorway is already underneath the sea, underneath the water. So the city won this plot of space, and they decided there should be the, the Dijkman Library. Uh, it's a kind of national library of, of Norway. And, and the, the shape you see on this, I have to, have to click to make it visible, uh, and the, the shape of this building uh, was derived from a demand, uh, demand by the city council that this beautiful opera building should be visible when you leave the main station. This is the, the, the building of the, uh, this one, the building of the main station. When you come out the main station, you sh still should see uh, the opera house. So we have this kind of cantilevering, cantilevering uh, uppermost uh, floor, as you see. Here. We have an atrium to bring light into the building, and so this is the uh, architecture more in detail. Uh, structural, it was has been a bit a uh, challenge. How do you do this cantilevering thing? Uh, at the end of the day, we decided to suspend it from the roof, but this I will show later. For the internal arrangement, uh, with uh, this. Uh, uh, Daylight simulation has been done. It has been done by Transolar. We didn't do it in, in this case here. Story for story, everything was checked. And then, of course, in an in a interactive process, in an active process with the architecture, the, the, shapes of, the shape of, the, of this atrium uh, has been uh, defined. Uh, the university in Oslo did in parallel uh, a study to, to prove this uh, calculation. Uh, then the shape of the atrium was fixed and we could develop this uh, s structure going up. And on top uh, we have this uh, structural roof, a kind of folded plate, a kind of folded plate that uh, cantilevers, cantilevers to the edge and on the edge we have these hangers uh, that uh, transport the, uh, the loads to the roof. The requirements for, for, for the envelope, in one side you need daylight bring into the building, so the facade has to have a certain, certain, certain part of transparency. Uh, you, on the other side, you want to have a solar protection. When the sun is shining, it should not come, there should not come too much sun into the building. And we had uh, requirements for the thermal uh, insulation. So the, everything was fine. Uh, resulted, so we could define two types of facade. The facade that is pretty much shaded could be 100% open and the other facade should be 50% closed. But then, boom, again, passive house standard came above us and this passive house standard means that we should have an, an, average, an average U value for the facade for, for, for 0.45 and with this 50% transparency, you do not, simply do not get such, an, such a new value. Uh, so what to do? <laughs> what to do? Uh, what to do? We um, uh, 
thought of a lot of lot of different things, and at the end we we came up uh, why not using insulated um, glass fiber reinforced polymer elements as a load bearing uh, wind load bearing and and a structural element for the for the facade. Uh, you easy can develop an extrusion profile, and uh, for. For, for, for this, uh, in section, it, this is for the shape we developed. You, you, uh, when you look carefully, you see here a, a triple glazing, a triple glazing, which is required. Also, the building, I, uh, the residential building I showed before, uh, uh, for, for this passive house standard, you have to have triple glazing. Double glazing is not simply not enough to provide this U value, which we need for for this winter case of minus 20 degrees outside. But why uh, glass fiber reinforced polymer? It's the the lambda value, which is dramatically better than than uh, using aluminium, and uh, the calculation of the thermal bridges proved it. So. This is then the, the, the uh, design, design in the end, just a, a few slides to show, uh, to show how it's built up. We have this continuous bracket at the edges. Then we, the, 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 the mullions, these uh, uh, composite elements, are, they, they are hanging, uh, they are hanging. And then we, we attach again a, a composite a transom uh, beam. Uh, then the mullions from the upper floor are hanged down, and they are only fixed horizontal. They are only fixed horizontal uh, to, to allow different, different deflections of the concrete slab. Uh, they are only fixed horizontal. Then again, a composite uh, transom to, to, to cover the, the the, uh, the uh, raised floor, and then the uh, triple layer clays, and, and then the, ga the gaskets, and f finally an exterior glass pane, which is necessary to protect, to protect the, the, the sun shading, the blinds, uh, and an uh, additional uh, interior glass pane. And that is the, the, the structure we, we've Thanks God, we find a contractor who wants to build it in budget. This is always a hey. <laughs> For those of you <laughs> dealing with this, you know that it's always a problem. In the beginning, people, uh, companies are very helpful. They assist you, and at the end of the day, when they really have to give a fixed price and guarantee this price, uh, you are happy when you, uh, when you reach, uh, when you are within budget. So uh, that's how it, uh, how it uh, uh, Will look like from interior. There is already a, a mock-up, a mock-up uh, being set up with an uh, outdoor exposure to see the seal, to the, test the ceiling and the details. And this should be the end. When I'm here in two years, I can show this as a picture. Thank you very much for your attention. Manfred, thank you very much for a fascinating lecture. You started off with this quote from Leonardo about the, what do you call it, the simplicity of the ultimate, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And I think you've demonstrated that beautifully. But what you've demonstrated is the ultimate, the sophistication of this um, simplicity lies in enormously detailed thinking. Exactly. An enormously detailed construction of thought through to realization. The simplicity is, de is delivered in the most elegant, effortless, but full, effortful way as well. So thank you very much for that gorgeous um, range of projects, inspiring in its simplicity and inspiring in its sophistication. But thank you.